It's yellow, it's an explosion, and it's Welsh. Today, we're drinking Pineapple Express IPA. Hi guys, it's Jim here from drtangenstein.com with another episode of Beers of the British Isles. This is the series where I scour the Isles of supermarkets all across Britain to find you the finest beers they have to drink. In today's episode, we're drinking a Welsh beer. Our first Welsh beer, but don't hold that against it. We're drinking Pineapple Express IPA. This is a collaboration brew between Tiny Rebel and Polly's Brew Company. Like I say, both Welsh brewers, both great. So this is three pounds from Tesco. I'm not sure if you can get it uh, other places. We're deep in lockdown now, so it's fairly difficult to uh, find your way onto the websites of supermarkets uh, out there. Um, you can, of course, get it from Tiny Rebel and Polly's Brew Co themselves. Uh, and other online, uh, other online retailers also. Now, this is a 6.2% IPA. It's 440ml can. So, you know, three quid for that. You cannot possibly complain. I saw somebody, uh, somebody on, uh, on Untapped had the, uh, the very creative comment of Pineapple Express, more like expensive express, which, <laughs> you know, good one. Uh, but three quid for that. I'm not complaining to anybody. I, mean, I haven't even tried it yet. So I'm torn on this one because uh, Tiny Rebel give a lot of information about this beer. Uh, first off, I say it's 6.2%. The malt bill is a pale malt, extra pale malt, and oats. So already you're imagining that there's not going to be a hell of a lot of malt character there. Couple that with the fact that the starting gravity which means basically how much sugar was in there initially was 1.062 and it's 6.2%. That means I've calculated the finishing gravity to be about 1.007. This is sounding like quite a dry beer, which is fine because it's, you know, it's an IPA. It doesn't need to be anything but, except they did add fresh pineapple to this. That promises to be an explosion of pineapple, in fact. So, is it going to be dry or is it going to be sweet? I don't know because pineapples are pretty sweet. That malt bill says it's going to be dry. Uh, the the yeast they used to make this beer was the treehouse yeast. Now I don't know a hell of a lot about this yeast, but I believe it's one of those uh, kind of London ale inspired yeasts that they use to make New England ales. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong on that one, please please do. Um, so everything's pointing me here towards a really dry beer. Uh, other than the pineapple. The hops in this are Cascade and Bramble and Cross. So you've got a bit of a, you know, a bit of an American and an, and an English hop there. Um, I don't think they have Welsh hops, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, so I'll let them off for that. Um, but Cascade is is super kind of grapefruity, bordering on tropical anyway. I love Cascade. Uh, Bramble and Cross is just one of those British hops. I'm sure they just threw that in for the bitterness. Um, this is gonna be an interesting pour. 6.2% alcohol, uh, 42 IBUs, I think. So the bitterness should be about you know, 0.75, the ratio. I'm talking it to death. Let's just see what it tastes like. First things first, it's cold. Of course it's cold. It's a nice, hoppy IPA. Of course it's cold. Um, the second, so the, the, the second thing I'll comment on is, when I cracked this can uh, just a second ago, there was almost no kind of, you know, pift. There was almost no uh, carbonation escape from that. So I'm really intrigued by this. Uh, the head retention looks, looks pretty great. Um, and the color is amazing. I mean, it actually almost looks like pineapple juice, which is, uh, which is pretty great. Um, you know, a nice sort of golden colour. 
nice gentle well actually it's it's probably it's probably actually quite an aggressive haze uh, which I guess would be from uh, the yeast the the, the treehouse yeast would give it that haze um, for those who, who don't know uh, certain yeasts metabolize hops in a certain way which uh, leads to a, a hazy beer it's, it's not it's not yeast in the beer that makes it hazy it's the metabolites of the hops uh, downstream that makes it hazy okay so that's the appearance I'm going to uh, give this thing a sniff oh yep 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 that is uh, that is pineapple uh, so let's I wonder what it tastes like. Yeah, very low, um, very low carbonation. Like I said, I knew that already just opening the can. But I think that's what they're going for. I'm really starting to get, uh, build up a, a story to this beer now. Um, I'll just have another sip. very low carbonation like I say um, pineapple right up front um, but it's not like other beers that I've had um, of this kind of fruited style fruited style where after the fruit disappears everything's gone after the pineapple dies off there is beer behind there um, I'm I, I'm not sure if it's a great beer or not but it, there's there's definitely beer after the pineapple Yeah, I mean, it's it's it, it's it's quite sweet. It's not super sweet. It's quite sweet, which means they must have put a hell of a lot of pineapple in there. Um, the the beer side of things is yeah, you can you the you're left with the bitterness in your mouth um, and sort of pineapple on the nose. Um, it reeks of pineapple once you dive in there. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is everything it says on the on the tin. It's super juicy, uh, super hazy. Sits really nicely in your mouth. I have, well done, guys. The breweries behind this beer, like I said, it is a collaboration brew. We've got Tiny Rebel, which are from Newport. They. They are currently celebrating their eighth year in business, I believe, which puts them at the starting in 2012, Newport, South Wales. They've collaborated with Polly's Brew Company uh, up in North Wales in the, in the beautifully named town of Mould, I think, in, in North Wales. Um, I, haven't had, I haven't had many of their beers, but I have had on the occasion that I'm, I'm out in a pub and I, and I see that they've, they've got one that looks interesting on, on tap, I have had them on tap and uh, and yeah they're, they're, they're pretty good uh, tiny rebel are the ones that that I, I really know um, and if you look at the I'll just point you towards the the can here uh, this is classic tiny rebel to be honest this this beer is classic tiny rebel I haven't had enough uh, Polly's brew co to to really comment on whether this is them also maybe it is uh, but this is classic tiny rebel they were the f they were the first brewery that I became aware of that really fell foul of the uh, is it the Portman Group, where they had this beer. Uh, I don't usually do this, but I, I will name the beer. They had this beer, Kutch, and um, if you if you look at the tiny Rebel logo, it's this kind of like graffiti teddy bear. It's what they do, you know, that they have really creative graffiti inspired labels, and uh, the the Portman Group basically said one day, I hope that's right, the Portman Group basically said one day. Uh, your beers are appealing to children. You have to change your branding, basically, which I think is ridiculous. Obviously, we don't want kids to be drinking uh, too young, but I mean, I think we've got bigger fish to fry than the packets that beer come in, than the than the, than the cool, creative, artistic containers that that the beer comes in. I don't know. Uh, maybe that's me, but I mean, the the, the can is amazing. Um. This 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 beer is pretty impressive. 
And Polly's Brew Company have only been going for, I think it's two years now, so 2018, I think they started. Um, for these two to come together like this is, 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 is pretty good. I'm gonna sum up this beer. I don't want to because that means that the beer is gonna be finished. Now, you, can't, you really can't ignore the appearance of this thing. It looks amazing. It looks craft. It looks expensive. It looks great. Like I say, very low carbonation. Head retention's fine, you know, there's oats in there. Um, but without the carbonation to fuel the head, it's gonna dissipate. This is exactly what they wanted this to be, by the way. This isn't an accident. This is exactly how they wanted this to be. So the appearance, glowing uh, straw. I mean, straw doesn't do it justice. It's a, it's a glowing yellow color. Um, really fine haze here. Really, really aggressive haze, um, which you just don't get in beers of this price bracket. So that's the, that's the appearance. Scent, pineapple. And I don't, I just, I don't just mean uh, pineapple. You can almost smell the acidity of the pineapple. It's so strong. What do you think it tastes like? You got it. Pineapple on the mouth, in the, in the mouth. But like I say, after that, the aftertaste isn't just of pineapple juice. It's not clawing at all. It's quite... I don't want to say crisp and dry because it's not, it's very sweet up front. But the aftertaste isn't of a juice, it's of a beer. And you can, you, the bitterness comes through at the end. It's very clean. It's very, I'd say classy. It's a very good beer. Having said that, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mark it out a 10. What I'm gonna do is say that if this beer were a song, it would be If You Like Pina Coladas by Jimmy Buffett. And that is not just because it's got pineapple in it. It's because it's a really catchy song. You listen to that song, it's gonna be in your head all day. You taste this beer, you're not gonna forget it. Uh, and that song is about two people finding themselves and bonding over something that they didn't quite realize that they both liked. I guess in this, Tiny Rebel and Polly's Brew Co figured out they like pineapple. I strongly suggest you go find one of these, whether it be at a supermarket, an online retailer, from the breweries themselves, or from your independent bottle shop. When you're done with it, and you love it, uh, take the can down to your local bottle shop, tell them you want more, and they'll have more for you. I'm gonna be honest, maybe just get two of these. Until then guys, cheers.